Okay, Greg Masters reporting from the Age Medicine Management Conference here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I want to introduce you to George Shapiro, who's a physician and a fellow of the American College of Cardiology. He's on the planning committee, and he's been moderating a couple of sessions. Hi, Dr. Shapiro. Hey, Greg, how are you? I just want to welcome uh, everyone here to the AMG this year. It's, uh, it's a great conference. Uh, it's all about education, educating physicians. Great right. gathering, about maybe 2,000 docs here today. There's many docs. It keeps on growing every year. I started about 10 years ago with age management medicine. So my background in my early years uh, was involved in heart failure, heart transplantation, where I trained at Columbia University in, in New York City. And over the years, I shifted my focus from disease-oriented medicine to a very proactive, preventative medicine approach, which is uh, the focus of really the age management medicine group. It's really a, a way to reduce disease and prevent it from happening before it occurs. So talk about that as a so-called conventionally trained cardiologist. What prompted that shift? You know, a, a lot of my patients uh, are overweight. Obesity is, is a, a big problem uh, globally. Uh, a lot of the people who are obese have diabetes, insulin resistance, and a lot has to do with lifestyle modifications. So we, we sort of teach our patients how to eat properly, how to exercise properly, how to reduce the, the effects of abdominal fat, which, which results in big inflammatory uh, mediators being released, causing most of the chronic diseases that we see today. Uh, heart attack, stroke, diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's disease sort of all get prevented. And, and that kind of shifted me into uh, Senegenics, where I'm the current president of Senegenics New York City uh, down at Wall Street, where we see uh, a lot of executives and we're involved with corporate health trying to reduce disease in the workforce. Uh, so the, a lot of these companies have healthier uh, workers, a better return on investment, less people getting sick, and the whole concept is reducing disease, making people feel better, more energy, more focus, lean, uh, less abdominal fat, the toxic, dangerous fat, uh, better lean muscle, and better focus. So talk about Cynogenics. What, what's the background on the company? It sounds pretty promising. Cynogenics has been around since 1996. I became involved with Cynogenics in 2005. And again, their approach is, you know, really to... Uh, teach people how to eat better, exercise better, and more of an optimal, optimizing their hormones, sort of bringing their hormone levels up to up limits of normal. And there's many different hormones. It's not just about testosterone. Uh, it's not about growth hormone. You know, it's about a whole complex of hormones, reducing insulin and cortisol that hold on to body fat, uh, increasing your thyroid and adrenal gland. As we get older, we, our hormones decline. We have an endocrine dysfunction, and we get subclinical hypothyroidism. We have adrenal insufficiency. Uh, our sex hormones decline, and we tend to age, not only from the outside, but from the inside. So, you know, our, our main approach is to really slow down aging, age management medicine. You really can't stop aging. You know, we're very, we, we kind of coined the term age management medicine. We slowed down the aging process. So we're more focused in on preventing very proactive approach, optimal medicine. So for someone who's interested in this uh, different focus of practice, what, what's the starting point for them? You know, I, I think this, is the, this should be the focus of everyone's practice right now. Um, I remember training in some of the city hospitals in, in New York City, and the patients were all overweight. They'd come in to see me. and it would just be about writing prescriptions, multiple prescriptions, polypharmacy, uh, four prescriptions for sugar, four prescriptions for cholesterol, prescriptions for heart failure. You know, patients are on 15 medications a day. That's no way to live. And all they care about is setting up their pills in the morning, you know, five for breakfast, five for lunch, five for dinner. So we can prevent all this. And the best way to prevent it is to just really change lifestyle, uh, eating foods that are more organic, uh, reducing gluten in our diets, uh, having non-GMO foods, foods that don't contain hormones uh, and antibiotics, all to boost your immune system, make your immune system strong and reduce, you know, frailty. And when you live, you live well longer, basically, better quality of life, stronger bones. So how is some of the new biotechnology informing these kinds of interventions? You know, uh, this conference that we, we had this year at the AMG is, is, is incredible. The new technology uh, regarding epigenetics, personalized medicine, genomics, stem cells, regenerative medicine. This is the future, really the future. We can really, you know, we all have stem cells in our body and they go to sleep. 
So now we can wake them up with new therapies, not only injections or injecting fat or injecting stem cells into the heart. You know, there's new approaches now where we can actually give people growth factors, apply growth factors to the skin to make your skin look better and, and bring you back to the younger years. Yeah. All right, so it's great we're getting all these innovations and developments in science and technology, and the, not to mention the information explosion in digital health. What does this mean for the clinician who's really on the ground seeing patients a day at a time? How does this get translated into doing things differently? You know, physicians really need to focus on the patient. They really need to discuss with the patient their lifestyle. It's, it's, it's easy to just prescribe a medication. But to prevent a problem, we need to start younger. So my practice uh, of 25 years now in New York involves really instructing the patient when they're younger to prevent the problem as they age. So it's really an aggressive approach, a very proactive approach. So a typical patient would come in to see me and we perform a very comprehensive blood test, looking at hormone levels, markers of inflammation, markers of disease, genetic markers, new advanced inflammatory markers to, you know, that, to evaluate heart attack and stroke. Then we put them through about five to seven hours of diagnostic testing, looking at their brain, what their risk for Alzheimer's disease is, looking at their heart function and lung function using uh, what we call metabolic stress test. That actually gives you a functional cardiac output instead of a resting cardiac output that normally cardiologists uh, evaluate their patients with an echocardiogram. Now we can get a functional cardiac output. How much is your heart pumping with exercise? We then look at your bone density, your muscle mass, your fat mass. We can look at your endothelial function. You realize that the endothelium is the inside lining of our blood vessels. We have 60,000 miles of blood vessels in our body. It's a huge organ. The inside lining is very important. As we get older and get sicker, that inside lining becomes dysfunctional, and the term is called endothelial dysfunction. So one of the tests we do, we can actually look at the inside lining of your blood vessel and how it functions. And so we get a functional evaluation of your blood vessel. This is really important because the endothelial lining makes nitric oxide, and that's a hot topic today, nitric oxide. It's a vasodilator. We do bad things to our body to reduce nitric oxide, believe it or not. Uh, if we had a fatty cheeseburger, we cut our levels in half. Uh, if we have high sugar diets, we cut our levels in half. High cholesterol, cut our nitric oxide levels in half. What about smoking? What do you think smoking does to nitric oxide? Not good. Reduce it to zero for six hours. We have no protection. So nitric oxide is our main protector. It's anti-heart attack, anti-cholesterol, anti-atherosclerosis. So we now can measure your nitric oxide level in your body. And what we can do is make recommendations to raise it. Uh, we look at how flexible you are, how strong you are, your resistance training. We get a baseline of your, your brain function. As I mentioned before, we look at different types of memory, composite memory, verbal memory, visual memory. We look at something called processing speed, your executive function, your neurocognitive index. All these things give us an idea of, are you gonna get Alzheimer's disease? How can we reduce Alzheimer's risk and so on? So, you know, after you're there the whole day, then we'll sit down with you and you spend two hours face to face with the doctor. And in these two hours, we look at all your blood test results, look at all your diagnostic test results. And I'll get a good idea of where you're at and I can recommend a program going forward. Within two weeks, you're having more energy, less, uh, less weight, more muscle, less body fat. You're starting to think better. Uh, we have a nutritionist and an exercise physiologist that puts you through all these testing, but then they also sit with you and go over a whole diet program that's customized to you based on your results. We also customize an exercise program based on your metabolic stress test, looking at what's called your VO2 max. So, you know, it's a very, it's a kind of a, a neat way of looking at this. Uh, we're starting to do now special blood testings that we're going to start on our patients looking at their genes, their genome. And what we can do is take that genetic imprint, send it to a laboratory, and find out what vitamins they're deficient in and get a personalized vitamin complex for them. So instead of taking 20 different supplements, you may just need three supplements. So that's really called personalized medicine. Excellent. And um, this is a field that's relatively new. Can you spend a moment or two and contrast the age management medicine side of things to individualized or perhaps personalized or even precision medicine? Or are they basically the same? Well, you know, it, it, we, we, it's just not one approach to take care of all patients. You just, you know, it's, it's 
we can, because we have the human, the technology for, the, for genomics and epigenetics and the human genome, we can now personalize it to you. You may be deficient in, in, in one thing. I was at a lecture the other day and one of the speakers, he had a deficiency of vitamin, no, he had an excess of vitamin B6. And he was taking all these supplements with vitamin B6 in it, didn't realize it. Even though vitamin B6 is a, a water-soluble vitamin, he was starting to get toxic side effects from B6 because he had a genetic deficiency in one of his single, in the SNPs, we call it SNPs, a single nucleotide polymorphism. Because he had that deficiency, he was, every time he would take his supplements, he'd get numbness in his feet and burning in his hands. We figured out that he had this deficiency, he had this excess of vitamin B6, and then started uh, avoiding it and the symptoms went away. So this is, is a very personalized approach to you, your genes, what are you missing, and, and how we prevent it. So you know, one of the things also I didn't mention was telomeres. Telomeres are the ends of your DNA that protect your DNA. Think of a shoelace, the, 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 shoelace, the tip of the shoelace called an anglet is plastic. Think of the shoelace itself as DNA, the tip would be the telomere. As we age, these telomeres get shorter. When they get shorter, you have unprotected DNA. And now, once you have no more telomeres, that DNA is exposed, it becomes a free radical, causes cancer, damage, and so on. So we want to increase our telomere length. How do we do that? Basic things, stop smoking, exercise every day. And there's some new telomerase activators that are available that you can take to increase your, your, uh, your telomere length. So, you know, it's all this new technology. Uh, we try to educate doctors at this conference, try to, you know, uh, uh, show them how we're doing it in practice. I've been doing it now 10 years at Sanogenics in New York City, uh, showing people, educating patients. But we're able to spend more time with patients. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you so much for spending time with me today and giving me the lowdown of the conference, and your enthusiasm is rather impressive. Thank you.